finding the cheapest PC case that looks good is a bit of a feat here in the UK, as normally budget models either have too many polygons, can replace your Christmas tree, or... Um... Alright, looks are entirely subjective, but there's no denying that this case is refreshing to see, while being significantly cheaper. But it makes you wonder, what's the catch? This is the Element Gaming MN25, a micro ATX case that can be found for around £20 on eBuyer, if available. Most likely due to Corona, it does keep going in and out of stock, but when it does, it actually undercuts a lot of budget cases in terms of price. And sure, it doesn't have RGB, but in exchange, you get something that is subjectively clean looking. Uh, with a feature set that you don't even see at this price point, such as a power supply shroud, bottom fan filter, tinted acrylic panel, and an included 120mm fan. This is something you'd see when you bump up to 30 to 40 pounds in cases, you know, the ones that usually have rainbow lighting. And I'm mentioning RGB a lot here because even if, you know, the lighting and stuff cost pennies to implement, they do add a small premium in the low budget spectrum of cases and for some of us regardless of your opinion just want a box and prefer that premium to be spent somewhere else but there's got to be a compromise somewhere after finding concerning things uh, with this case and with so little reviews about it i bought the egm n25 again for this in-depth look and sure you could say that i'm quite aping off gamers nexus i mean there was some attempt at trying to look like a tech youtuber emphasis on attempt First impressions are that despite the tinny sheet steel used, the MN25 is very sturdy, and that's thanks to the power supply shroud. Not many cases sub £30 feature this, instead positioning the PSU at the top like it's 2009. Anyways, the shroud helps with other things such as providing a place to fit two 120mm fans and either one or two 3.5 or 2.5 inch drives, because there's no drive bay. There's a bottom mesh filter for the power supply, which despite being held in like a 20 pound case would, it is a nice touch, and the 15 mm elevation means it actually breathes. Another pleasant inclusion is a pre-installed 120 mm fan. When looking for cheap cases, factoring extra fans does drive up costs substantially, especially when many models don't even include one. But if you do wish to add extra fans to this MN25, then yeah, there's space for 120mm ones at the top, rear, and again two on top of the power supply shroud. Whether these actually make a difference is another matter. The acrylic panel, though susceptible to scratching, has a good bit of tinting and is held on by chunky thumb screws, which are initially screwed in gorilla tight. So yeah, be sure to have a screwdriver in hand. But finally, it fits micro ATX motherboards and is pretty much the poor man's NZXT H400. If the flat cardboard box suits you, then yeah, it looks much cooler than its competition. But as with life, there are compromises, and they haven't ended just yet with this case. Building in the MN25 is fairly straightforward, except from the lack of drive bays and... Well, there's another thing this thing lacks. Cable management space. Cheap cases have bulge on their side panels for rigidity and space behind the motherboard. This doesn't, so cable management skills are forced out of you. With a small section 18mm thick, at least there's enough space for that 24 pin cable, while the rest of the board being 8mm thick, pretty much allows for at most one layer of cabling. So be sure to take your time, use the cutouts for included tweezers, and it'll fit. There's also another caveat. EG claims the max cooler height for this case is 165mm, with an Octua NHU-12P measured 158, well, it fits by a hairline. It seems the 165mm figure seems to come from measuring between the motherboard's PCB to the case's edge, rather than the CPU's IHS, so it's safe to say that 158 is the max cooler height. Anyways, the building process is also where we see the cheap nature of this case. For example, there's only one actual PCI slot cover, the rest just stamp outs that you bend off to remove. Look at this funky top fan vent that seems to have more steel than holes. Despite the acrylic panel tint, there are visible cutouts that are telltale signs that this case is generic. In fact, the EG MN25 looks to share the same base as the EG CR24, Sigma Tech Scorpio, and the CIT7. At the front, we have two USB 2.0 ports with a headphone and mic jack, 
which looks rather similar, uh, and a plasticky power and reset switches with LEDs. Finally, it's built on 0.8mm sheet steel, pretty tinny if you've had a chance to build on a better quality case. But these are all just nitpicks since cheap cases employ the same cost cutting measures as well. And let's not forget, while lacking some features, at a higher price. There is one thing however that not even cost cutting could explain within reasoning. The lack of intake for fans. Uh, first of all, the front is completely blocked off and that's not a bad thing in and of itself either. Uh, when you have a top and rear fan as exhaust, you can achieve what's called a negative pressure setup where the air seeps in through the crevices and any other intakes all around the case, like the NZXT H400 and 500. Uh, but the only intakes in this MN25, if you could even call it that, are the cutouts at the bottom uh, for the hard drives and the PCI slot covers, which have holes, just not very large. So let's do a few tests. Sure, this isn't Gamers Nexus accurate and the test methodology isn't perfect, but hopefully it paints a picture. Our test system includes a stock Ryzen 5 2600X with precision boost enabled, on a copper wraith spire cooler and an overclocked sapphire rx 570 at 40% fan speed we'll also be testing four parameters the out of the box configuration with its stock fan as rear exhaust two cheap cooler master case fans as top and rear exhaust two noctua nfp 12s as a scenario of using quite pricey pressure optimized fans and finally with all spaces filled with cooler master and noctua fans we also have data for two other cases, uh, such as the Cooler Master Half XM, a mid tower with a 200mm front intake, and a DIY Core P3S case, one with its side panel on, and two with it off. So, kind of representing the true open air setup, the top of your motherboard's box. Further details of the methodology are all in the description below this video. Our testing consists of a simultaneous CPU and GPU torture workload to simulate the worst case scenario. First look is the CPU side, with load temps between the MN25 setups hovering between 72 to 75 degrees Celsius, delta T over ambient, within margin of error of each other except for the 4 fan setup. If you ever want to know how these will perform in the context of your room, just measure its ambient temperature and add it to these figures. Yes, that means that at an ambient of around 20 degrees, all of these setups have thermal throttled. A specific look at the MN25 stock and temperatures wise, we see it plateau at the 5 minute mark, with the CPU dropping down 250 MHz from 3750, and from shy below 100 watts to a slow decline to 87 watts, but not before a spike on the 5 minute mark, more on that in a bit. Despite not having much cases to test, we can see how the MN25 stacks up. Uh, uh, it's good to note that our graphics card throws out some warm air back in a case, hence the Cooler Master Half XM is only a few degrees cooler than the MN25, while a completely open setup, the DIY P3 with no side panel, gets direct fresh air, hence being the coolest. Here is a temperature log of all tested cases, again with the MN25 setups hitting the thermal limit. In fact, we see a bump in temperatures between the 5 to 8 minute mark, to which the DIY P3 and Half XM drop down afterwards. That's quite likely from PBO, realizing that there's headroom it up the power draw an extra 10 watts in that window. I'm not sure why it happened on the MN25 setups though, as we've seen on a stock config, it threw the 2600X right into throttle territory. Let's switch over to the GPU side. Again, most are within margin of error except for the 4 fan setup. It might be easy to assume though that the fans on the power supply shroud would help cool the graphics card, though it's also possible for them to either impede airflow or do nothing at all. For a fan to push air, it needs to pull it from somewhere. And unfortunately, we see it throttling in its stock and fig, going down from 1400MHz clock to below 1200, and from shy of 160 watts down to 140 and below. Comparing it to the rest doesn't do it justice either, with almost a 20 degree difference between the DIY P3 no side panel and the half XM. And unlike the CPU temp, the GPU temp is much more straightforward with the MN25 setups not really being helped by the negative pressure setup, again with the PCI slot covers and top fan vent looking to be too restrictive. 
So yeah, this thing is a bit of a hot box and it kind of frustrates me as well because it doesn't have to be that way. If we see some stamp vents like near the front bottom of this case, as well as along the side panel, then yeah, we might see some wonders with temperatures without adding too much in terms of manufacturing costs. And yeah, it would also help if the top fan vent uh, was more holes than steel, like ratio-wise. And you could say the same thing to the PCI slot covers as well, which, okay, you could remove them or you could buy mesh ones for cheap, but then that adds to the overall cost as well. And I'm surprised that the cheap Cooler Master case fans outdid the Noctua ones in some instances. Uh, but that's probably because of my test methodology, as again, all fans were set at 7 volts, which meant they ran at different RPMs and noise levels. But even if the Noctua ones were much better, I still don't recommend buying them for this case, especially because, um, you know, since these cost £10 each, so two of these cost the same as this whole case. And yeah, um, even though I don't have much gaming benchmarks to show for it, uh, it's safe to say that the high temperatures will lead to either an increase in noise from the fans ramping up, a degradation in performance, and also the longevity of your parts because of all the heat that's being kept in. But let's not forget, this is a 20 pound case. And if you could muster up an R5 2600X and an RX 570 at the minimum, then yeah, I'm sure you can squeeze in for a better quality case. So yeah, we've put in some lower budget parts here instead, something that is, you know, more reasonable uh, for people that are buying this case. But surely a CPU that draws 50 watts and a GPU up to 130 watts won't cook themselves, right? Ah, um, at least the HD7850 ran cool as it always did and it kind of helps in this case. Uh, the final thing to do though was to fully ramp up the case fans. Uh, with the Cooler Master ones installed at 7 volts, they ran at 780 RPM, give or take. Uh, but with 12 volts running at 1200 RPM, we do see a drop of 10 degrees max on the CPU. So at least that's good. So this is my take here. If there were more intakes, this would probably be the best micro ATX chassis on the low budget spectrum of cases, it may even be able to compete with those up to say 40, maybe even 50 pounds. But as is, it's still a pretty good case, again, for being one of the cheapest here in the UK, and also for having a very nice set of features. Although at best, you could put in a CPU up to say 77 watts TDP, and a GPU up to 140 watts TDP before temperatures start becoming an issue yeah at that point i don't recommend buying extra fans again for that power supply shroud and just stick to having at most or at least at the very least two fans top and rear as exhaust for that full negative pressure setup if you want a case at this price point but don't care so much about looks or features then i'd recommend the zenta a3 it looks to be a good micro atx alternative that can breathe from the looks of it and the power supply uh, can help with that as well. But if you're looks and budget conscious and don't have parts to chuck out as much heat as our test system, then yeah, I'd recommend the EG MN25. Just remember to put um, a top fan at the very least to uh, you know get that full negative pressure set up. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you like or dislike this kind of format. And I'd love to hear your input on the test methodology. I could already tell that it needs improving. Like for example, I might disable PBO and do a more static overclock. Um, the 40% GPU fan speed or graphics card fan speed, I learned that the hard way. And um, most importantly, I need to get myself a, uh, a decibel meter to noise normalize because that seems to be the best way around, you know, like a gamer's Nexus style. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is the budding engineer. I uh, hope you've, you know, enjoy this video at the very least and see you soon.